This is Lauer's latest 6mm CND Dreamer, the widest, wildest rectilinear lens for Micro Four Thirds. Let's go. Lauer has been very busy in 2022, and all the Lauer's review I've done this year have been, yeah, quite positive. And I even prematurely crowned the 18mm f0.95 Argus as the lens of the year, because I was pretty sure that there can't be a better lens for the remainder of this year. But how wrong was I? Spoiler alert, I love this new Lauer 6mm CND f2 lens. But I do want you to watch the rest of this video to see all the sample images so you understand why. But more importantly, whether this is a lens for you. If you remember, Lauer introduced the widest rectilinear cine lens, the 6mm T2.1 at the beginning of this year, which I also review and praise for its optical prowess. In that video, I speculated that Lauer may make a photography biased version because it would be silly to waste a lens design with such wideness and sharpness. What surprises me the most is not that Lauer makes a photography version by simply removing those metal teeth on the focus and aperture rings, but completely redesigned the whole barrel, and critically to include some electronics. Yes, you can start your wet dream right now. <laughs> this new 6mm f2 has electrical contact for aperture control and metadata pass-through while maintaining the same footprint as that dinky little cine version. Lauer is at the forefront when it comes to merging electronic with their manual lenses. In fact, they may be the only one doing so. But please, if you know another manual lens company that does this, let me know in the comment section below. But why am I highlighting this as a chapter? Well, it is because this 6mm f2 is the first auto lens that actually feels normal. Okay, I'm not sure if I can describe this, but all the other auto lenses I've tried and reviewed before, the 7.5mm, the 10mm and even the latest 15mm macro, while their aperture control works fine, but there's this robotic connection between the photographer and the lens. It just wasn't as smooth as let's say, operating your native Olympus or Panasonic autofocus lenses. Weird, but true. This new 6mm f2, however, feels completely natural. Smooth in fact, and that jerky robotic connection is all but gone. So, to sum it up, Lauer has made a significant refinement in this area. And last but not least, like all the other auto lenses, the electronic contact allows any Micro Four Thirds cameras to know what lens is attached to them. And this is very useful as the camera can set the IBIS automatically and critically engage any manual focus assist if you've enabled it. As soon as you turn the focusing ring, things such as auto magnify and peaking will automatically appear. And this is pretty cool. Well, I have made my case when I reviewed my first Lauer lens, the 4mm Fish Eye back in 2019. And guess what? My statement has not changed a bit. Lauer continues to produce some of the best built full metal manual lenses around. With the new 6mm f2, the focus ring is smooth yet reassuringly stiff for that precise feel. Everything is metal and the only things that don't feel cold in the winter like today are the lens caps and even the included pedal lens suit is made with thick metal. Yeah, like very thick metal. <laughs> and frankly, Lauer has put some mainstream manufacturers to shame when it comes to build quality. <coughs> Panasonic. Ugh. So then, once again, nothing to complain, but everything to write home about regarding build quality. Well done, Lauer. Lauer's new 6mm f2 CND Dreamer is a perfect representation of what a great Michael Forthard lens should be. 
tiny with just enough weight to feel its presence. So I would say that this little guy here may be one of the best, if not the best handler for Michael Forther cameras. Because of the tiny dimensions, the lens does not protrude from the camera as much. So if this is your only lens on the day for shooting, you can easily slot this camera and lens combo in a large coat pocket or slide them into a tiny tech bag, just like the Wonder tech pouch that I use for street photography. So you get the idea. The 6mm f2 is close to perfection when it comes to handling. If you recall my previous 6mm T2.1 review, you will know what I'm about to say, because this new 6mm f2 has the same optical formula. So in short, you should expect the same performance. But let's find out. As you can see from this image, the central sharpness is shockingly good. Almost no visible difference even when stopped down to its peak at 5.6. But seriously, you really need to pixel peep to see the differences. And diffraction does creep in though at f11. Edge performance is equally impressive, even at wide open f2. The sharpness is already excellent. And stopping down one stop, your eyeballs will start to hurt. But if you want blindingly sharp like detail that destroyingly sharp, that will basically destroy your eyeballs, <laughs> then stop down to f4. And again, the fraction will affect the performance at f11. And this lens does stop down all the way to f22. Lauer's new 6mm f2 is a rectilinear lens. And I must say, it is very well corrected. There is a hint of barrel distortion at closest focusing distance, but nothing that I would be too concerned about in real life. And there is absolutely none from medium to infinity. So don't worry unless you are shooting a test chart or something that with a lot a lot of straight lines. And therefore, in my opinion, Lauer's new baby lens deserves an award just for optical correction instead of using software like <laughs> Panasonic. Vigne is perhaps this lens' only weak point. It's basically visible through the entire aperture range. It is less pronounced at f8, and you do lose about one to one and a half stop of light at corners at the wider apertures. However, you can correct this in post with just a slight adjustment. So I wouldn't really count against its overall performance much, but still, it is my job to highlight this in this video. We are looking at an extreme ultra wide lens here. So people who are interested in this type of lens won't really care about bokeh, but it does affect the rendering of this lens. And overall, I would like to say that it's very filmic, analog look, with a little old school touch. And I personally like this. So while this may not please any bokeh hunters, um, it would definitely put smiles on landscape and cityscape photographers, street photographers even, and maybe astrophotographers. Lauer 6mm f2 deals with flare pretty good, in line with every premium Michael Forther lenses I've used so far. And Sunstar on the other hand, well, it is out of this world. Well, just like the bokeh, it's quite personal I know. So here are some examples with the lens set to f8. And let me know in the comment section below whether you like this look or not. But me personally, I think it's pretty cool. Unlike his silly brother, there is no green tint in colour reproduction. And something that I found a little annoying, especially if you use other lenses in a project and try to <laughs> colour match in post. The new photography version, 
well, has no such problem, and I found the colour to be more neutral and punchy. However, I'm not saying that you don't need to do any colour matching in post, but just much easier than Cine version. Well, breathing may not be a problem as this new 6mm f2 CND is a photography bias lens. But in case you need to do some occasional filming, then you need to know that this lens breathes harder than Darth Vader. Almost like Darth Vader just caught COVID. Yeah. A few months ago, I recommended Lauer's impressive 6mm T2.1 Cine lens due to its impressive image quality, impeccable build and perfect handling. Also being the widest and fastest rectilinear lens currently available on Michael Forthert's platform. But after testing the new photography bias 6mm F2 CND Dreamer, I prefer it over its Cine cousin. Not by little, but like, I want to get one myself right now. <laughs> Even though I already own Lauer's brilliant 7.5mm f2 and 9mm f2.8, also the Panasonic Leica 9mm f1.7 and Olympus 7-14mm f2.8 Pro. Yes, I love Panasonic Leica's 9mm 1.7 still. It is still my favourite vlogging lens. But this is a 6mm lens, a lot wider and not that much slower at f2 either. And yes, it is manual focus, but being a micro forthert lens means that there is plenty of depth of field to play with. And people are looking for extreme ultra wide lens that are not looking for shallow depth of field or bulker anyway. And critically, and importantly, that this photography version has the all important and much improved electrical contact that allows many auto in camera features such as IB settings and focus assists. And this makes this menu lens not only easy to operate, but also much more enjoyable to use. For your reference, at 500 bucks, this is a bargain for what it is and what you can do for your photography. And this is quite a rare thing and unique in the Michael Falls as well. But if I have to complain about something, well, it has to be the exposed and unprotected USB port, which is for a firmware update. Okay, this is not a weather seal lens, but I just don't like to see a big hole on the lens barrel <laughs> and he's just basically asking for trouble. So what's my verdict? Well, I, yeah, you can kind of sense what I'm going to say, right? Just go ahead and buy it. If you are looking for an ultra wide, yeah, the craziest rectilinear micro forthlet lens. If you want to know whether I prefer this or my Panasonic Leica 9mm f1.7, well then, remember to subscribe and stay tuned as I will be doing a comparison between the two. And that's it folks, I hope you find this useful and, you know, informative. And let me know what you think about the Lauer's latest 6mm f2 CND Dreamer lens. It's quite a long name. <laughs> Whether it deserves to be crowned as the lens of the year 2022 over my current favourite, the 18mm f0.95 Argus. <laughs> anyway, you know what to do now. Give me a thumb if you enjoyed this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking, and of course, Michael Four Thirds. Peace. Okay, this is the end of the video. Thank you for sticking around once again for this bonus section. And uh, it is really freezing cold. We have a cold snap coming in the southeast of England uh, for the next few days. In fact, next whole week is going to be quite cold. And I haven't seen this in a while. The lake behind me is actually frozen. And uh, I wouldn't dare to walk on it because the, the ice on the edges are still quite thin, but in the middle section is probably quite thick. And, uh, but yeah, it's frozen and I haven't seen this in a while. Everything else behind me looks like winter wonderland at the moment. <laughs> and you've got eyes everywhere. It's actually pretty cool. But about this lens, Lauer's latest 6mm f2 CND Dreamer is quite a spectacular lens. I have having a hard time deciding whether this or the 18mm 0.95 Argus are better. You know, which one's better? Which one can be the king of this year? And uh, yeah, it's going to be quite a tough decision because I have 
uh, reviewed and seen and used so many different lenses this year. Uh, I have a few favorites, but which one would come out on top based on the performance, the bang for buck values, uh, and the overall uh, image quality? Because uh, uh, I, as a photographer, you know, my my really main concern is image quality. Uh, obviously usability and everything will count into it. So it's gonna be a tough decision to, uh, to see which one will come out on top. So you have to stay tuned for my future video to see which one will be the uh, lens of the year and also a, a list of other lenses that I think is worth your money, basically, and, and, uh, and uh, something to look forward to, I guess. So in the meantime, Enjoy yourself, wrap up warm if you're in England because it's pretty cold at the moment. And uh, yeah, just uh, go and shoot something. I think, you know, with uh, <laughs> frozen stuff like that, you probably get some opportunity to film or photograph something pretty cool, right? So until next time, I better go home and keep myself warm now. <laughs> I'll see you all later. Bye for now.